I have a guest who, I guess we have a relationship, you know, at work because um, I've been privileged to have um, a few interns at Dragon Digital Radio and Amy, my guest today, she is the person who actually makes all of that happen. And we're going to talk about internships. We're going to talk about co-ops. Um, I was an intern when I was a student. I really, really appreciate the everything that internships bring, you know, the experience that they give you and, and, and just the relationships that you can form through there and everything else. And, and we're going to talk about all of that. We're also going to talk about how COVID has affected them and how that has changed maybe the market a little bit. We're going to give you tips on how to apply for an internship, where to find them. And, you know, we can maybe even talk a little bit about, you know, that process of interviewing online or instead of uh, in person. So we're gonna really dive into a lot of great information today, today with Amy. Um, as I said, Amy Crawford, she is the Assistant Director of Internships and Cooperative Education. Um, Amy, welcome this morning. And I really wanna open our conversation just by getting to know you a little bit before we dive into all that great information we have for all of um, our community and our students today i just want to get to know amy a little bit i don't think that you know in all these years that we've worked together we've had right. an opportunity to really share so welcome great very nice to be here thanks for having me chris i always like to promote the internship and co-op program uh, a little bit about me i've been working at hcc since 2014 I started out as the career assistant, helping students with resume writing and mock interviews. Uh, but then I transitioned into the internship co-op area of the department. And now I'm responsible for helping students, um, you know, find internships, co-ops, and I manage the new on-campus internship program, which is something we're really excited about. So uh, I love working for HCC. Um, Previously, I worked for University of Baltimore and their career center. Um, I'm part of the career team at HCC. We love working with each other, and our goal is to help connect students to employment opportunities. So, um, yeah, so I love the career development field. It's something I've been passionate about ever since uh, I went to grad school to study counseling. I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do when I was in college. I was lost. I went to my career development center at my college and met with a career counselor. And then I was like, wow, you know what? I think I'd really like to do what she does. So um, sorry for the barking dog in the background. <laughs> We're at home, right? We're all working from home. <laughs> um, so anyway, meeting with that career counselor when I was in college sparked my interest in the career development field. And so I've been in it for quite a while. Did you, when you were a student, did you actually get the opportunity to take an internship? Was this something that you had a personal experience with that it enriched your, um, your career life, your student life? Well, you know, it's really interesting because when I wasn't quite sure what my career plans were, I did an internship in a bank and spent the summer working with bonds. And I decided that was not for me. So that's one of the, <laughs> that's one of the valuable things about internship. It can rule out what you don't want to do. Um, I knew for sure the banking industry was not for me. And um, when I was in grad school, I landed up doing two internships that really gave me experience for my resume and helped me transition to my first job. And I love that you said that. And I love that, that that's actually part of your experience because I agree. I agree. I you know, sometimes we have this idea. I think that I think the hardest part of college is is, is figuring out exactly what it is that you want to do. Quite oh, honestly, yeah. you know, I I kind of knew what I wanted to do. I always had an incline for communications and the arts and those kind of things really spoke to me. So I knew that I wanted to do something related to that, but I didn't know exactly where I wanted to land. And through experiences like internships and volunteering experiences, you know, I kind of like just was going into places that I thought maybe called my attention. And so I went and, and experienced that and, and I did that and I continued to discover, I really enjoyed doing this, you know, like I would go maybe to, I would go maybe to like, um, 
I apologize, that's my phone and it's connected to my computer. Um, but I would go to, you know, just, just um, different places, different organizations. Um, I had the opportunity to enter in a, at a TV station, um, both commercial and then a small TV station. In, and that was actually through HEC, through you, Amy, I don't know if you remember, through, um, I forget the name of the organization right now, but it's, it's an assisted living uh, center. And um, so I had the experience of both, you know, commercial and a small station, a small station that really dedicated itself to a community. And I have to say, I fell in love with that idea, that, that idea that I could interact with um, the people who were actually watching the things that I was doing. I could interact with uh, the people who were going to consume the products. I, I could really get to learn what their needs were and what they wanted to see and what they wanted to hear and then build a programming based on that. So that, you know, really through that internship that I did, I realized that even though probably my first experiences with um, television and radio were commercial, right. and I thought that's where I want to go. I ended up realizing that that's not what I wanted to do. That what I wanted to do was to serve the community, you know, through communications, through productions, just really connect with that community and serve that community. So I found a lot of value in that internship and it, and it opened up, you know, my, I, it just allowed me to get to know myself a little bit better and what I really wanted to do in my career. Oh yeah. I mean, and usually at a smaller company too, you're able to, to do more and wear more hats than Sometimes you were pigeonholed in a certain capacity at a, at a larger company. So I, always have, I have a funny story. When I was in graduate school, my first internship was at Jewish Vocational Service. Um, and then my second internship was at Catholic Charities. And I always laugh about, you know, I, I had a wide range of clients and, and got the experience that I needed to enter the field. And that's, and that's beautiful. That's the other thing about it, you know, usually when we find a job, we stay in the job for a long period of time. Internships are short. And so, right. as you said, you can really, you know, go and, and test, you know, different things and being completely different spectrums of the sphere in the workplace, right? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. You know, non there's actually a, the most there's a new business. concept. There's a new concept right now called micro internships. Mm. come onto the field since COVID really it's sort of launched um, micro internships are shorter term project-based experiences that might not be for the full semester like an internship would be um, and so we're that's something that we're trying to get going on HCC's campus having virtual micro internships as and there's another company a national company called Parker Dewey Dot com that has um, short-term project-based experience that all students are eligible to apply for, including HCC students. There are no fees for that. So, you know, that's something new, really, um, because many companies had to make their internships virtual or some had to eliminate internships altogether. And then they thought, well, we still want to bring students on, so let's do something that's a little bit shorter term. Right, absolutely. So let's, you know, there's so many things that you just said there that I want to dive into, but let's, let's start at the beginning. Let's, you know, for those who might maybe are not familiar, right? Right. What is an internship? Like, what is that? Right. An internship is a form of experiential education that allows you to apply what you've been learning in your classes, the theory and practical skills of learning uh, in a work setting. So Internships at HCC are usually, you know, anywhere from six to 10 hours per week. Uh, and some are paid, some are non-paid, although there has been a trend lately for internships to be paid, which is good, right, over the past few years. Um, and then when we, when we refer to a co-op, that's an internship for academic credit. And that is something that is possible for HCC students to do. Um, and there are certain courses at HCC that are linked um, to the internship program. So let's, let's uh, differentiate that a little bit better. So a co-op, then you're actually earning credit for that, but when you're doing an internship, you're not earning credit? 
Um, right. So how, how do we understand that and differentiate that? Oh, okay. All right. Um, so an internship, when we say internship, it's usually not for academic credit. And when we say co-op, that's what it is for academic credit. So, um, and you have the option to earn one to four credits at HCC. And you also have the chance to do multiple internships for credit. So you could do two semesters worth as well. So, uh, you Instead know, of taking a class internship to differentiate it from just a job, an internship and a co-op, they both have measurable learning objectives of, of what you're going to be learning during the course of the internship. Um, and these, <clears throat> when you do an, an internship for academic credit, we appoint a faculty advisor to oversee the internship, or I'm sorry, or the co-op. Um, and so the faculty advisor helps the student develop these measurable learning objectives in conjunction with their workplace supervisor. So that's really what differentiates, you know, an internship co-op from just a regular job. You have the measurable learning objectives you're trying to obtain. So when would it make sense to do a co-op and when would it make sense to do an internship for a student? Um, uh, I mean, it really depends on your academic major and how many, um, some majors at HCC really don't have a lot of room in their schedule for an optional course like a, a co-op. So um, sometimes students just do internships for the sake of gaining experience, getting that experience on their resume. And they're not worried about the credit aspect, you know, and both, mm -hmm. both internships and co-ops are valuable. I mean, because you really, when you're in school, you want to take the time to, uh, you know, to, to apply the skills you've learned, be able to add those experiences to your resume to help you transition after you graduate. I mean, usually when you go and apply for a job, the first thing that you see on there is you have to have this many years of experience, right? Right. And there's always been a joke like, so I should have been working <laughs> in the field that I want to work when I was back in high school or right. something to be able to come to these years of experience, right? Such a catch so, too, right? Right, right. So internships there facilitate to obtain some of that experience and, and to really, you know, build your resume as well, right? And, you know, talking a little bit about resumes, that's something that we are available to help students with. And when I meet with a student to work on a resume to apply for internships, I always recommend that they put um, their course projects that they've done and certainly highlighting the skills they have, like those hard skills like Microsoft Office, Excel, Word, you know, technical um, equipment they know how to use, in addition to the soft skills that they've learned. Um, and that's really important that that made a big difference for me because um, when I started looking for internships, I remember we had that meeting. I don't believe I met with you. I may believe it was somebody else at the time that I met with uh, who worked in the internship department. But I had that interview and I brought my resume and I had some experience from Ecuador. I had taken some classes related to the field that I wanted to be in, right, to communications from Ecuador. I had um, classes ha I had taken from Ecuador, but I was, I had very little experience here in the States and I had nothing to really show for myself. I mean, at the time I was working um, at WIC, I also had experience working as a realtor. I mean, nothing related to communications right. or what I wanted to do, right? Other than, like you just said, the classes that I had taken, the projects that I had done. Um, and it was really, really eye-opening for me. And it was really important for me to have that meeting because I was not selling myself in a way, you know, to prospective employer um, that actually showed that I had any type of experience. I mean, if I just had my resume showing my work experience, I, I, I had nothing, you know, I really had right. nothing connected to where I wanted to do. We so, talk a lot uh, to students about transferable skills. What can you highlight from one job and promote it to the employer from one setting to the next? You know, customer service skills, problem solving, um, you know, organizational skills, all of those things. Um, because that's a great thing about our students. A lot of them have had part-time jobs. They're working while they're going to school. 
And so there's some things that we can help them pull out and emphasize on their resume. And it's really important to do that. It's really, mm -hmm. really important to know how to do that and to have an expert, you know, somebody like Amy to take a look at it and help you really, one, acknowledge that you have those skills because many times we don't think, you know, we don't think of them as, as, as skills that we want to use and we want to put on a resume. We're like, well, that's just part of who I am, right? Well, that's what you need to show your prospective employer. That's what your prospective employer um, is looking for and, and you just need to be able to show that on the resume. So I encourage everybody, you know, especially in, in, in this day and, and age, um, if you are part of HEC and you're looking for a job and you maybe lost a job when the pandemic started and you're trying to transition into a different career or you find yourself just exploring the, the, the work, you know, and the, the environment and, and want to switch careers, whatever it is that you want to do, whatever it is that you are, have have a, a meeting with with Amy. Have a meeting with somebody at the career center so that they can check your resume. And I, I was blown away with that meeting. Like I thought I had a really you know on point kind of resume. And then when you guys looked at it, I developed a resume specific for internships, right? That allowed me to kind of transition in my career because that resume showed the certain skills that were needed for the internship that I was applying for, right? Whereas if, if I was just looking for a different job, I would have probably stuck to my original resume that had all of my previous work experience. So it's important to even understand that depending on where you want to go and depending on what it is that you're trying to do, your resume might, you might have two versions of your resume, one that you use for certain things and one that you use for other things. I learned so much um, in, in, in that meeting yeah. that I had. I'm glad you say that because, you know, we love working with students on their resumes and it is a free service part of and we do work with community members as well um, so you know we we try to stay on what what stay on top of what's current in resumes even from like which fonts are popular and the big thing right now in resumes of course is um, keywords and applicant tracking systems getting your resume past the ATS um, mm -hmm. so that you'll come up in the employer search um, so we try to help students put those keywords for their desired field into the resume um, by analyzing job ads, internship ads, what are the skills, you know, the employer wants, and then making sure that those uh, skills appear on your resume. Really important to know all of that um, so that you can get past the algorithms <laughs> of all right. those applications out there right now and actually get in front of the eyes of the people who can make a difference and who can make a decision that will open up the doors for your new career. Um, yeah, I can't so, say enough about, like you said, putting relevant course projects that you've had. Um, yep. Sometimes students don't you know and sometimes i've even met with nursing students that haven't put their clinicals on their resume so you know having the clinical rotations all the the you know that your program has provided you with definitely putting that on the resume as well it's really important to really understand how to better present those ourselves in a resume and to have somebody look at it so somebody who knows what to look for it's it's key so take advantage of that so amy you know, COVID came, I mean, I think before COVID, it was pretty clear how things work. And, you know, if, if I wanted an internship or a job, I could just come up to, um, to your office, I could just walk in and have a conversation with somebody, right? Well, right now we're living in a virtual <laughs> environment, right. we're all home, and things have changed a little bit. Right. So how, what are the ways in which students can find internships in this current environment? You know, it's interesting, like the impact of COVID on the economy and employers having to, to do layoffs with businesses not doing as well, that's been, had a great impact on the job market. Um, of course, some employers had to cut back on the number of interns they brought on and other employers decided to, hey, let's make this work. We're going to try to do virtual internships. So those are possible to do right now. You can search for virtual or remote internships for, you know, remote marketing internship. Um, and so, I mean, and there probably are still employers offering in-person internships as well, but um, right now for, uh, certainly for students who wanna do internships for credit, for co-op, 
we're only allowing students to do virtual or remote internships due to you know liability issues so um, there are a whole bunch of websites that I always recommend to students when looking for an internship. The number one um, website that I want to plug today is HCC Job Connection, which is our online job board for positions. And this is really like a gold mine uh, for students and alumni to see local jobs that are, employers are hosting. Um, so you just have to register for free on HCC Job Connection, you can post your resume. That's optional, you don't need to post it if you don't want to, but then you'll have the ability to search the jobs that have been listed by local employers and, 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 that, and internships as well. Um, other, oh right, HCC share. Job Connection. I just wanna share You have my, my to have an quick. HCC Job Connection account and if you search the college website, you'll land on this page Job seekers can register by clicking that link. Um, and then it gives you the steps. And there's a way for you to, like I said, upload your resume. Um, and once you do that, you'll have access to the jobs. And these are jobs that are different from the jobs at the college. Um, there's another link on the co college website for, you know, to work at HCC through human resources. Those are posted, but these are with local companies. Um, and then actually anybody can list positions. We've had employers from Chicago list positions trying to recruit CAD students. So, you know, anybody who wants to recruit our students can go to HCC Job Connection. Um, my other, other places to apply would be, um, we always look on internships.com, indeed.com, uh, LinkedIn has a whole job board as well. I can't say enough about LinkedIn in terms of especially since we're in a virtual environment right now for students to have that um, online presence. It's really important to have a LinkedIn account even as a student. Um, and in the tagline under your name, the headline, you can say what your major is and the types of things you're seeking. Um, like communications major seeking, you know, public relations internship, something like that. Um, and we work with students on their LinkedIn profiles as well in career services. That's something that we can help with. But I always think of it as a partnership, uh, definitely a partnership to, to come into career services and to work with me or Zaina Watson, our internship assistant. Like we want you to succeed and we're gonna try to help, right? We're gonna try to identify employers that would be a good match for you, employers who have attended our job and internship fairs, employers that we have relationships with, but we're also going to look together, like on those websites I mentioned, indeed.com, internships.com, to help you find some opportunities. Um, I wish I had a magic wand that I could just wave and say, you know, I can get you this internship at this company, but a lot of times the intern or the student needs to fill out the online application with the company and, you know, there'll be a formal interview that, you, that he or she would prepare for. Um, so definitely things the student needs to do to get ready, like brushing up on interviewing skills and, and having the best resume possible. And we're here to support every step of the way. So Amy, you know, I think it's pretty clear for the student's perspective, right? Um, why they should definitely look into doing an internship as part of their career and, and go out there and establish those relationships and get that experience. How about for employers, you know, people who might be listening right now and they have their own business and, and they've never considered bringing a student, they've always wanted somebody who's already a graduate. Um, how does it benefit the employers to bring the students in to do internships and co-ops? I think employers will find that students are really enthusiastic and eager and they're going to bring energy to the organization, right? They have new ideas they want to try. We have an intern right now in career services our career services ambassador, and she's creating a Canvas site for us. We haven't had one before. She's doing little um, videos on how to find a job, these little doodle videos, and we don't know how to do that at all. So, you know, <laughs> I mean, she has ideas that we, that for, give the student perspective to us of what will attract students to our office. And, and the same is true for other employers, right? They, relatively speaking, interns are low cost, 
you know, even a lower salary than a typical employee, shorter duration. Um, I do think it's important for employers to be able to provide a good quality internship experience, you know, by providing mentoring and supervision. And, uh, you know, these days it's very rare for an intern to be saddled with a lot of clerical work because that's really not the point of the internship experience. Absolutely. I, you know, I try to have an intern every semester at the radio station. And as much as it is great for me because, you know, I have certain projects that I already have in mind that I will assign to them, you right. know, uh, like PSAs, creating PSAs, creating promos, things like that, that are important for a station to work. I love to hear from them and I really try to incorporate their voice into their internship, you know, based on what it is that they like, what it is that, um, that they aspire to do with their career. And I understand that not every employer is going to have that same flexibility that I am able to offer through the radio station. But I want them, you know, my goal as, as, as an employer when I have an intern is at the end of the internship, I want them to take something with them and say, I did this, I made this, something that they can take to another employer or somebody else and say, you know, I want to do this because look, I already have done something, right? I have this experience. You can listen to this pieces that I worked on. You can listen to this um, uh, PSAs, this promos, this show, um, you know, that I put together. I know how to edit. I know how to do this. And I, I want them to take tangible things from their experience, from their time at the radio station that will move them forward in their career as they continue to move along. So, and well, they I know bring... you've provided excellent internship opportunities for students. You're definitely, you know, very well acquainted with the process and, you know, We've actually, you know, the Dragon, your, the radio station was one of our first departments to offer internships, and we've tried to expand that to other departments through the on-campus internship program, which is actually the virtual on-campus internship program right now. So confusing, right? But we, we have departments on campus, even now during COVID, that are trying to offer opportunities to students, depending on what their interests are, things that they can do remotely. Um, and that's something we've been trying to grow. Uh, it started in, I believe, spring of 2019. And then, um, so, and it's grown over the, over the last year and a half. But of course, with COVID, things have been, it's taken a little bit of a reduction, but we're, we're still, we're, we're still trying to find those virtual opportunities. Absolutely. And, you know, the students, when, as you said, when they come in, they have energy, they have ideas, they are, in tune with so many things that are happening and they bring all of that fresh air, you know, with right. them and, and it, it's just, it's just wonderful. So as much as I try to enrich them, they, I know they bring so much to me and they, they enrich me, you know, as their employer here at, at the station. So for students who might be watching, who might be listening and they're like, you know what, I, I never considered an, an internship before and I didn't think that they were going on right now because of COVID. Like I didn't right. think that they were available anymore. <laughs> What's that process like? What do they need to do in order to find and enroll in an internship? Uh, the best thing to do is to call our office. We do have someone answering the phone. Um, so it's uh, 443 uh, and they can schedule an appointment with me or Zaina Watson, the internship assistant. Um, we have, we'll, we'll meet with them. The first thing we'll do is look at the resume, make sure that's ready to go. We'll talk about strategies for looking for an internship. Um, one thing I forgot to mention earlier when I was speaking about LinkedIn was a lot of times we will, once the student creates a LinkedIn profile, we'll look up and see where are HCC alumni working. Um, we can search, you know, you click on the HCC little icon there and we'll see all the alumni working in various companies. We can search by position title um, or if we're looking for a specific company, uh, we can pull it up that way. And that, that's a great way for students to connect um, to other people working in the field and they have that connection of H HCC. So. So they come in for what we call a co-op or internship intake appointment. They meet with me and Zaina Watson. Uh, we get them up and running looking, we look right, right then during the session, we look at possibilities online. 
and then the student will come back to us for return appointments to check in and we can help you know motivate them and give them new ideas to point them in the right direction so oh, and the other thing is of course we also as we sent you know as we're busy applying and sending out resumes we also make sure that the student's preparing for interviewing right the next step so that when they get that call they're ready um, to have either a virtual interview or in-person interview so we do a lot of mock interviews practicing typically asked questions for the field let's talk about the virtual interview i'm glad that you went there uh, for for a minute because that's new um right i mean we we heard you know just during this interview today my phone rang right, right. <laughs> as, as my we dog remind. barks <laughs> your dog barked um i know that this wasn't something that people were seeing but right before we went live amy had to change a couple different rooms around her house because there was too much light coming in and and it, there was too much brightness for our purposes this morning um, so then, you know, sometimes technology doesn't work and your internet doesn't right. work, right? It glitches. There's so many things. So as, as we are preparing and as we are continuing to explore this virtual world and we continue to do, um, interviewing online, what are some of the things that the people should maybe think about, um, when they're looking for an internship and they have that interview set up? I think, like you said, the big thing, the background, where are you going to be that it's a quiet spot? And it's hard. It's definitely challenging these days to find a spot um, with family members at home. And, you know, you just do your best. And I, I actually do feel that employers understand. You know, you see funny videos on YouTube or on the news with kids crawling over people and cats in the background. You know, we're all doing the best we can. But trying to find a quiet spot, um, looking at the camera. Um, of your laptop is important for that eye contact piece, uh, not having a busy background, being professionally dressed, even if it's from the waist up, right? <laughs> they don't have to see if you're wearing shorts, but um, at least looking good from the waist up and having uh, a good, good microphone that so they can hear you as well. I guess shoes are not required in this shoes environment. Shoes are not required. <laughs> Oh, goodness. <laughs> well, let's think to worry about when you're looking at your wardrobe. Right. Well, you know, the nice interview. thing about virtual interviews, you can have your resume, of course, in front of you. You can have some notes. These are my strengths. I'm going to be sure to mention these qualities. You know, you can sort of have your cheat sheet notes. And um, another thing I forgot to mention about virtual jobs, I mean, you can apply anywhere, right? We have a student right now in the co-op class who's doing a co-op for a production company in Los Angeles. Okay, so would that have happened during non-COVID times? Not necessarily, right? So he was able to apply for opportunities in California. And I think, you know, students are having a wider looking, uh, you know, farther away from home for opportunities. So there's, you know, and, and, and I, I love that you brought that up because there are opportunities that have been created by COVID. You know, mm -hmm. we tend to concentrate on all the challenges because there are many challenges and we can't look away from them, obviously. Right. But it is important to acknowledge things like what you just said, you know, that it has expanded the market. It has expanded the opportunities because places that may be um, geographically far away and never even, even consider offering a virtual opportunity now have plenty of them, you know, uh, open for students to take advantage of. So definitely, definitely, you know, take a look at the market. We'll definitely take a look and see about what's going on because more and more, I think we're, we're finding that there's flexibility um, and there's opportunity for growth farther away from our neighborhood. Well, the other interesting thing is, I mean, since COVID too, employers are looking like crazy for social media interns. So, you know, if you have those skills, to help promote the company and have a social media presence. There are a lot of opportunities. Same with a lot, you know, tech, tech fields needing, you see a lot of opportunities for that as well. Absolutely. Now, in the past, you, we've always had the internship fair. Right. And I'm just curious to know what's going to happen this semester. Are we going to have an internship fair? Is it going to be online? Uh, should people start preparing for that uh, right. and signing up for it? You know, um, we're excited. We just finalized the plans for our, our fall 2020 job 
an internship fair. It's going to be a combined event this year instead of a separate job fair and a separate internship fair. We've combined that event and we've the college has purchased a virtual recruiting platform called Premier Virtual, which will allow students to chat online with companies uh, with a chat feature. Students will register in advance. Let me put uh, the flyer up for this. Oops, now it's gone. <laughs> uh oh. Sorry, Chris, maybe if you can find it. Um, they'll have the chance to interview and chat. I'm sorry, they'll be able to chat with the recruiter. And if the recruiter is interested, then he or she will be able to invite them for like a, a, a video interview right then and there during the event. So using the employer's platform, either Zoom or Google Meet, whatever the employer chooses. So it'll be a three hour event on October 9th from uh, 10 to one. Uh, we just opened up registration to employers two days ago. We already have eight people registered. We expect you know, hopefully you know, 80 to 100 companies to register. And, uh, oh, here we go. Thanks so much for pulling that up. That's the flyer. Uh, employers and students can go to howardcc.edu backslash job fair. And that's where employers can register for the event and that's where students can register for the event so no cost at all to the students or community members to attend uh, we're really excited so we researched a whole bunch of platforms we felt um, premier virtual was a good one for us so just so we can paint a better picture because um I, I, I must admit you know I'm a little apprehensive with the idea um, of, of going I'm like are a lot of people gonna come and click at the same time? Oh, am I gonna see who is there? Like, am I gonna see the other um, presenters? C can you just kind of like explain a little bit of logistically how this oh, is gonna sure. work for both the employers and the students? Well, we're going to um, have the employers divided by pathway, the same pathways that we have at HCC. And so that's the way that the companies will be organized. So it'll be easy for students like in, you know, STEM to click STEM and they'll, you know, see the opportunities. Um, and then each employer will have, it'll be like a square box on the platform with their company name. And when you click on it, you'll be able to see the computer, uh, the company profile, their web address, um, and the available positions they have open and the majors they're looking for, right? And whether those are part time jobs, full time jobs, or internships. And then, you know, so the student will have a chance to look at the companies that are coming. Actually, I think it's gonna be the day before they can visit the platform and sort of plan their strategy. The employers won't be there during that preview, but then during the live event, they'll be able to click a button to say, I wanna connect, you know, with this employer and chat with this recruiter um, through the chat function, answering some questions back and forth, but, uh, and then the re recruiter might say, hey, would you like to share your resume with me? And they can click a button and the employer can see the resume. Um, and then, like I said, they, they can do these one-on-one -on -one interviews break, you know, in a breakout room where they'll have a chance to talk more in depth with the, with the candidate. So we are excited. Um, and the student, like I said, the day before should be, will be able to preview who's coming. So it sounds like it's gonna be very, um... A very interesting way of, of carrying it, right? Uh, but then also, you know, sometimes it's intimidating for students to come and talk to an employer um, and chatting, you know, the, the option of chatting, not even having to see that person at first uh, until maybe you warm up to it a little bit. I think that is also going to offer them a little bit of um, ease, maybe. So would you, would you agree? You know, for even when we were had live in person job fairs, we would always help students approach know what to do when they approach a table, right? What do I say? So we always have students practice their self-introduction or otherwise known as their elevator pitch with their name, what they're studying at HCC, what they're looking for, and then maybe like a sentence or two about, you know, I've already had a little bit of work experience. For example, I've worked at Target and customer service um, just to sort of hook the employer of, of wanting to talk to them more. So. Knowing how to do that virtual, 
you know, you can do that virtually, you know, doing your elevator pitch, self-introduction to the employer, get the ball rolling. Absolutely. And I, I personally think that a lot of students are going to find this um, interesting. And I think that they're going to really like that because they're used to chatting. They're used to interactions right. online, right? So well, I think really that this is a great student turnout. We're going to promote this in classes and of course, you know, across campus departments. It's all open to the community as well, just like our in-person job fair. So, you know, we, ho we hope that a lot of job seekers will attend. And I'm glad that you said that, Amy. So just to clarify that, you don't need to be an HEC student in order to participate of this internship and job fair that HEC is putting together, correct? That's right. It's open to the public, which is, which is great for job seekers during this economy. Uh, I think, you know, the college is trying to do its part to help with employment needs in the community. Absolutely. And the, for community members, because we've talked a lot about, you know, preparing, getting ready. Well, some community members might also want to, um, you know, take advantage of services like that and prepare and, and just understand how this virtual environment is going to work or things that they maybe need to uh, take in consideration of, or maybe, you know, they've had one career and now they want to switch careers and they are just not sure how to approach it. It's been years since they last were job hunting. Um, can they take advantage of the services that HEC offers? They can. I think that's a, a, a secret too, in some ways. I mean, we try to broadcast it as much as possible, but we serve the community. We are a community college. So uh, community members can come in and have a, a resume consultation for us with us. They can meet with us for job search appointments. They can use HCC Job Connection uh, to see listings. We have uh, you know, people in the office, that's, I specialize in internships. We have other people on staff that help with full-time job searches and career counseling. Um, community members can even see career counseling services with uh, taking advantage of our career assessments. Uh, for current students, there are no fees, but for community members, there are some nominal fees for the career assessments. So it's a great resource. I, when, we, when we tell students about our services, we always say, and don't forget, you can tell your families and neighbors, um, all that they're welcome to use our services as well. And how important that is right now in, in the market where a lot of people lost their job, a lot of people found their, themselves back in the, in the market for a job. And like I said, I mean, there have been people who have had long careers that may not have brushed on their skills, you know, for job right. hunting in a long time. Um, plus, everything else from the fact that it's virtual. How do I find a job? Where do I find a job? And then, you know, can I be, like you said, in my pajamas in my bed when I have those yeah. interviews? Because that's usually when I talk to my family, I don't think about what I'm wearing. I don't think about my hair. I don't think about, you know, what's behind me because it's right. my family, right? We're used to using our computers in, in a familiar way, right? In, in a very relaxed way. Right. Now um, it's the gateway to the professional world for sure. So we need to treat it differently and we need to get ourselves accustomed to that idea and, and prepare for that. So it's, it's important, you know, talk to, talk to Amy, talk to uh, Zena, talk to everybody at the Career Services um, Department at Howard Community College and see how they can help you uh, in this, in this time, get ready for job hunting, get ready to go out and, and look for your career and take that next step. So Amy, where can they find more information? Where can they contact you guys? Uh, well, like I said, we do have someone answering the phones to schedule appointments uh, and provide information. And that number is 443-518-1340. That's our main number. Um, but another good starting spot is our webpage for career services. And that is uh, www.howardcc.edu, the main college page. And then all you have to do is say backslash career and you'll land on the Career Services webpage. Um, and there are a whole bunch of resources on there, information about our career assessments. Oh, there it is. Great, thanks, Chris. Uh, if you scroll all the way down, right here at the bottom, we have where it says assess yourself, explore careers, gain support, get experience through internships, and then make career choices we think of that as the career development process, right? It's always good to start at square one 
assessing yourself, figuring out what skills do I have to offer, what are my interests, you know, what would be a good fit for me in terms of a career. Um, and then we have a whole bunch of resources, if you scroll up a little bit more, to uh, explore careers. Down a little bit more, it says explore careers. We give you resources for researching careers. The college has something called Career Coach, which links HCC majors to careers. We also have a great program called Virtual Job Shadow, where students can watch short videos about what is it like to work in a certain career. Um, you know, there's information about what can I do with this major? So, and you can find out salary information and job outlook on, on sites like ONET, the Occupational Outlook Handbook. So we sort of try to set up our web page as a, as a great way to approach the career decision making process, right? Starting with assess yourself, researching careers, moving on, the next tab says gaining support, you know, meeting with one of us to help with a resume. Uh, we also offer personal counseling, of course, through our office, but there's the piece of where I come in and, and Zaina Watson getting experience through internships and co-ops. It'll show you additional links to those pages. And if you click make career choices at the bottom there, make career choices, that is where you can find the link to HCC Job Connection uh, as another way of getting to that page where, where you can find out about local opportunities. Yep, so you'll just create your account. First time users have to create the account right there and then they'll be able to log back in and fill out fields like what your main, what their major is, you know, uh, cer certain computer skills, what their job targets are, right? Because you might not be interested in sales, so you can <laughs> choose not to, to put sales as a job target. You know, if you're a marketing major, you can put more like marketing research or whatever it is. So, um, so yeah, but definitely check out our website as a way to find out more about career services. Absolutely. And, you know, like we were saying earlier, just have that conversation to have that call. Um, I know COVID came and changed uh, things for a lot of us. And um, maybe you're, you were looking, maybe you're not sure, maybe, maybe you do have your job, but you're home and you're thinking, I want to switch careers. Um, maybe you lost your job and you don't want to back, go back to the same type of job that you had before and you don't know, but you don't know, you're not sure exactly where you want to go with it. Um, maybe you are in a career that you love, but you want to advance that career. You know, how do you do all of that? Have those conversations with somebody at Career Center at Howard Community College. Let them help you explore through internships, through, I mean, maybe maybe it is time to go back to school and take I mean, you I know, think certifications. I are using this time to go back to school and as they see ads and they might lack a certain skill like their own they're like oh man i better go get that training that i need there's training through of course our workforce and continuing education division for short-term training um i think that's i mean that and people learn languages during this time right say <laughs> rosetta stone or whatever i mean they're just everybody's going back to the books and using this time well to say oh, how can i come out of this with additional skills during this this time Classes that weren't offered before online are now being offered online. Things that you had to be there in person and maybe you didn't have the time because you had other commitments um, right. are now offered online and you can do it at your own pace at your own time in many cases, right? Depending on, on the option that it's offered for certain classes. So there is flexibility. There is opportunity within this environment that we're in right now. Take advantage of it. You know, have a conversation with Amy. Take, take a look at, at your career and your future, where you are today. Do you want to stay there? Do you want to move ahead? And, um, you know, have them look at your resume, help you prepare for uh, interviews and, and everything else that really comes with looking for a job. Amy, yeah, we're running out of time. Yeah, and is, is there anything else that you would like to add? I was just going to say, we, we are fully functional right now in career services. I mean, we are offering appointments by Zoom. We can meet with students. Um, you know, we can call you on the phone. You can email us your resume. We're working all different ways to connect with students. But um, I mean, we'll have several Zoom appointments a day with students, you know, to meet with them one on one and discuss their career plans or internship plans. So. So that's a good start right there. You can start on meeting online with somebody from the career right. services and then they can, you know, help you prepare for those other 
interviews, online interviews that you're going to have with employers, potential employers, um, to hopefully get that job that you might need, right? And, right? and move ahead in your career, maybe get that certification that you need. Maybe this is the time. Amy, thank you so much for this hey. conversation. I really appreciate it. You guys really offer a wide variety of things that assist you know our students and our community at large and i really do thank you for that i think that in times like today it's even more important than that before i mean it's it's always really important to have somebody to guide us and, and help us prepare so that we can go and present ourselves in the best possible way when we're looking for a new opportunity but i think now more than ever with everything else that we are dealing with, right? Being virtual, being at home, and all of the other factors, it's even more important um, to have those conversations and take a look at where we are today, how we want to present ourselves, and hopefully land that internship, land that opportunity that we're looking for. Yeah, thank you so much for your support, Chris. I know you're one of our career services fans. Thanks for helping us promote our services to students and the community. And, and I just want to end by you know saying we're definitely here to help. Don't reach out to us definitely reach out to us and we can and work with you.